Hey everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood Noah here, and on this episode of Noah's Little Toy Shop of Horror, today we are going to be reviewing the Jaws board game. And without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> So if you know me, you know that I always like to start these off by talking about one thing and one thing only first. So it's not the only thing, it's just first. And that is the art. Now sadly, I say sadly, the art is good, the art is amazing. But sadly, I have to say that it's probably the best part about the game. Now, when you look at the cover, it's the, it's the typical Jaws cover. It's the one that you see on the movie. It's the most popular poster. They even have it on t-shirts, book bags, lunch boxes. It's the Jaws poster. I even like I have like um, like a custom variation of this in artwork and it's still this. It's just a little different. This is when you see this, you know what this means. This is Jaws. And if something's like different, like you see the, like that cat poster and it says paws, that's still you still know that oh, that's like the Jaws thing. It's just making fun of Jaws. This is Jaws. So the classic poster, which is amazing, because who doesn't love the original Jaws posters? It's fantastic. Now, the instructions cover. Now, instructions suck. We all know this. Instructions in board games especially suck. But, the cover of the instructions is actually pretty cool. It's the, it's the billboard that was vandalized in the movie. Which is pretty cool. I pretty like. I pretty uh, like that. And then the the rest of it is it's nothing really fancy. It's yeah, just the cover itself is the best part about the art. But boo instructions. The next thing that is pretty good artwork, I might say, is the board itself. Now let me get this open. This is okay. So this is Act One, and I'll talk a little bit more about how to play it in a minute. So this is Act One, and as you can see, it's Amity Island. Now, it's nothing too spectacular or too special, but it's very well done. It's very well drawn and painted. I don't know specifically how they did it. I don't think it was digitalized. I think it was. I think this might have been a painting. But I think that's uh, really well done, and I very much like that. Now, if you flip to the back, it's not a black board, plain black. It's Act 2. This is a two-for-one special. It's a two-for. Now, if you see, it's just, a, it's just water with a sunken boat. Um, there are other pieces that I can't really hold up and show you all in one row because um, I don't have that capability. But uh, this, what you see right here is the sunken orca and which obviously will become clear once I explain the game. But there are different tiles that show different parts of the boat and if you flip them it has two different sides of the boat of how much it's sunken. And those are also done very well. It looks a, li a, a little bit. It looks a lot like the orca actually. And I also believe that that was done as a painting which I think is uh, pretty cool. And then we have, for more artwork, we have the the different cards for the different characters. You got Quint for Act 1, which is his baseball cap, and then Quint for Act 2, which is his shirt with his logo on it. And I also think these are really well done. I This has the oil paint. This, this is not, if it's not oil painting, it's very similar to it. So there's Quint. This, uh, for Act 1, Chiefs Brody is his police badge. And then Act Two is the um, the other the the patch, which I actually have. It's right here. Let me just grab that real quick. Amityville police badge. I got this for my birthday, I believe, and it was pretty nice. Pretty liking it. I gotta get a shirt to put it on though. And then let me get the rest of the cards because I wasn't able to grab them all for some reason. So for Hooper. You'll see his classic denim shirt with those nice glasses, because everyone great wears glasses, and that's just a fact. That's my unbiased opinion, just to let you know. And then Act 2 is his scuba diving gear. And the, like I said, art phenomenal. Loving the art. And then nothing too special for Jaws. Um, for Act 2, it's just this classic Jaws thing. And then Act 1, it, it, actually, I kind of like this. I, I love the, the mixtures and the flowing of colors kind of clashing to make the water. Some, it's specific not, words that I'm not good with. But that's for Act 1, and that one's actually pretty cool, and I really like that, too. Um, let's see. What's 
else is interesting about the cards? So for the different shark alert cards, you know, actually, I'm just going to explain the game as I talk about the artwork, because that will just save us a bunch of time. For the shark alert cards, what they are, let me just grab those bad boys, is at the end of each, well, at the beginning of every new round, what uh, you'll do is you'll pick up a r random shark card, or Amity event, and it'll tell you where people are on the map, like victims that you have to place down, and it has a little, it has specific artwork for each. Um, I know you can't really see the artwork well because of the camera. It's not the best quality camera, and like, for my, for me at least, the screen is tiny as hell. So, there's going to be a slideshow, obviously, but yeah. So those are the, the Amity event cards, and then there's crew gear, and these are mainly for Act 2. Let me just get rid of the rest of the Amity event cards. And what it is is, depending on how well you do in Act 1, the, uh, determines how many ge crew gear cards you get in Act 2. And they also have specific artworks, like you'll see the fishing pole, hook, trank spear, I was going to say terang spear, and, you know, many more, many more. And more crew gear cards, because apparently you could do a hell of a lot better than we did in this uh, first go-around, because we did not get barely any. And then you got Hooper's gear, which is what he automatically gets at the beginning of Act 2. And then you have the same thing for Quint and Brody as well, and they have their specific things. The artwork is pretty good on this too. It's it's simplistic, but it's still still nice. I still I still like them. I think it's really well done. Let me just yeah. And then you have resurface cards, and what resurface cards are is it'll show an area on the map. This is all. This is for Act Two as well, by the way. It'll show an area on the map or on and what location on the boat where he could, where Bruce could potentially pop up and attack that area of the boat. So there's um, only you pick three cards each turn, yeah. and what you do is he the shark, the person playing the shark gets to randomly decide where they would like to attack. Now the art it's it's kind of man it's nothing too fancy it's just a little uh, boat in a Diaphragm, dia, diagram, not diaphragm, jeez. But, you know, nothing too specific. I'll go further into how to play the game after I'm done with the art. This is just a quick little runaround to make my life easier. Because everyone loves, likes to live life easy. Why won't these come out? This is making my life difficult. Okay, so, and then for the pawn pieces, or the playable character pieces, you have Bruce, who's playing the little sharky dude which I think is pretty cool. It's just the classic shark, shark thing. Um, and then for Hooper, you have a white boat and a blue character piece, which is also pretty cool. I believe these are made out of wood. If they're not wood, they're synthetic wood. Um, but nonetheless, still pretty spectacular. This would be a heck of a lot better if I had a table in front of me. But, you know, baby steps, baby steps. Quint, you have a green character eye uh, piece and a big brown boat. I'm trying to say something. And then Brody got a little black piece. And then obviously you just use those to move around the map. For Act 2, you don't need the boats. You just need the characters. But Act 1, you need the boats. And Brody cannot get a boat, so don't try and cheat. And then for Act 1, there's these pieces that you get. There's characters, barrels, a beach clothes sign and the character's special pieces that they get to use. Um, I think they each get to use one each round, but that uses up a turn. You get a total of five turns, I believe, per character in a round, which is pretty cool. And something else that's pretty cool is that they decided to put in main characters, like the dog Pippet. Um, I think it's Pippet. It's either Pippet, Pip Pip, or Pippin. Uh, no one knows the name. It's not important. And then they have Brody's son in here as well, and then they have the kid who got snatched down and eaten. I think his name was Jake? I don't know. He wasn't that important. I didn't really care about that. But it was a really cool scene that they... And then these are little pieces here where these little arrows, or targets, 
that you see is where a specific character will attack. So this one's black, so it's Brody's. And then the different colors say the different... Uh, where he will attack. And then these little pieces right here, the red A's, is where the shark, the person playing the shark, could potentially attack. So you put those on the different pieces of the boat. And then the black ones are where the person playing as a shark chooses to attack. And then these are pieces of the boat. I would show them, but um, those will be a slideshow. There, so the artwork, it, it, it's it's really well done. I do like it. Um, it's it's like I said, it's the best part of the game, which is kind of unfortunate. And here you got your little notepad for each round. It's kind of like Yahtzee, except with murder. Which I mean, if you're playing Yahtzee with your family, I mean, that could go the same way. But yeah, the artwork, it's it's really it's really good. I really like it. Unfortunately, the game doesn't hold up to the movie. I mean, obviously you wouldn't want it to, because if the game is better than a movie, then I feel like the movie might be doing something wrong. But, um, so it's not that the game isn't fun. The game is pretty fun, but it's got a, it's got a lot of issues as far as um, gameplay and all that. First off, the, the game, if you want to play both acts, takes a, roughly two hours. And I know a lot of games seem like they take that long anyways, but this one's not as enjoyable to play for two hours because it just kind of seems boring and it drags. It, like, if you're playing Monopoly or Risk or something like that, it's it's going to be the same time relatively. It could be longer. But it doesn't feel that way because you're having more fun than you are with this game. Like, this game, after a while, I was kind of like, mm, not a huge fan, you know? Um, so how you play the game is, on Act 1, Chief, not Chief, the Chief Brody's on Amity Island. And he's got to bring barrels down to the docks so Ch uh, so Hooper and Quint can go on their boats and take the barrels and scatter them around the different parts of the ocean. And what, they need, what you need to do is, as the people, is you need to get two barrels on Bruce in Act 1 so then you can have a, an advantage in Act 2, going into Act 2. What Bruce needs to do is he needs to kill 17 people or get 17 points, depending on how many points per character that he eats. And then he'll have an advantage in Act 2, going into Act 2. Now, Act 2, what you need to do is you, you're on the boat, as you do in the movie, and you're trying to kill the shark. So the shark has, I think, a 17 lives like he has seven, to get 17 kills, and humans have 6 lives. Now... How you attack the shark is is where he resurfaces. Wherever he chooses to resurface is whoever's there or whoever is attacking it. Um, if you depending on how many the, whether or not you roll the dice, how many damage points you get or deflecting and whatnot, it's how many points you'll lose. Now, people can lose one of two ways. You can either be eaten individually or the boat can be sunk. Now, if the boat's it's probably easier in the long run because then you can just easily kill everyone altogether, but, you know, play it how you will, as a shark. As the people, all you need to do is kill Bruce. Bruce has a lot of lives, and, you know, kind of sucks, but, you know, he's a shark, he's a big boy. So, yeah, that's how you play the game. It's not too bad, not too shabby. But, you know, it's got its issues, as I said. So, without... Further ado, I think it's time that we rate it. Now, like I said, we rate in hearts because it ain't nothing but love here. And I think I'm gonna rate it a th uh, a three out of five hearts. I would give it a two and a half out of three, but it definitely has more positives in my opinion than it does negatives. Is it worth thirty bucks? I would say yes. I think it's worth the thirty dollars. Any more than that, I probably wouldn't buy it. It's definitely a nice art piece that you can put in the background of, like, a display case to say you have it. Um, I Like I said, I enjoyed it. It's got its issues, um, but it's, it's an overall good game. But, you know, that's my review. Hells yeah.